dark save for light being cast from the big tv screen and the imminent sunrise that's teasing the one starry sky with whispers of morning hey george hey lions how's it going man it's going pretty good we had some gorgeous weather here i got to like spend some time outside i'm in the mountain west as you know the weather here in the spring is like normally bananas And anyone who lives here who didn't believe in global warming before, like, I sure hope they do now, (laughs) because this is what it's going to be like forever. Sucks. And and as Futurama says, the only way to do it, to to fix it, is by putting a giant ice cube in the ocean like that. He puts in his drink in the morning and then he gets mad. Uh, No, actually, so (laughs) (laughs) on that point, um, I work from home on Fridays, so I take the kids to school on Fridays to give Megan a break, and I get to walk the kids to school, and, you know, it's it's a quick quick walk, quick break. Um, it has rained specifically on Friday for the last six consecutive Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I don't know if you know how long consecutive is, but it's one right after the next. So. <laughs> Imagine um, one, yeah. now another one. Yeah, and then just write one and another and another. So, uh, so yeah, so so with, with the weather being bananas, it's also been a little bananas here. But man, just the consistency of it being garbage on Fridays, I have it's been unpleasant. So yes, good weather, nice. Yeah. Well, and and the thing, it's not going to stay good, right? Because it was cold not that long ago, and there's more like storms in the forecast. And again, you know, Mountain West, like near the Rockies, like we have a lot of weird weather at season transitions because there's weird like topography but you know i've been out here long enough now that i've noticed that the last couple of years even the people who were born and raised in this part of the country are like this seems unusual and because the first few years i was in this part of the country i was like oh man like these weather patterns and they're like no this is just just how it is like it's it's hot and it's cold and it's super windy because the way the storms come from the northwest and like you just you just get used to it it's fine you always dress in layers and then in i don't know like 2021 i noticed some people who are like in their 50s like lifetime mid or uh, mountain range people were just like i don't know man this seems pretty weird and i was like <laughs> oh crap <laughs> i was That's... hoping you were gonna say this was normal and did your stress in layers and and the problem with having wet weather fluctuate like that is it makes it really really difficult to play outdoor sports like golf for example hey yeah <laughs> you like that <laughs> Uh, I do. Um, also, like we're at altitude and the fact that we have golf courses up here sort of bums me out because it's a gigantic <laughs> waste of resources. But digital golf wastes yes. very few resources. Exactly. O- only the electricity to play digital golf, which, I mean, depending on your opinions about golf, may still be a waste of resources. It might be a huge waste of resources. It, yeah. it, it, it is the <laughs> least resource intensive way to play golf yes. by a sizable margin. Yeah, for sure. Uh, particularly this one, because... The game we played, which, okay, so uh, technically, this game is called Neo Turf Masters. Mm-hmm. This game uh, was a listener request. Uh, one of our patrons came into the Discord. Discord's open to everybody, but patron came in and said, hey, you should play this game. And uh, you might have a hard time finding it because they apparently got like sued or threatened to sue them for using the word masters as in like the masters. Uh-huh. And so uh, re-releases. Like masters of, of the universe, right? Yes. Like, so He-Man, He-Man and Skeletor. I'm imagining Skeletor <laughs> in like a business suit now, and it's kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Showing yes. up for his day in court. <laughs> um, yeah. So the Masters of the Universe said uh, you can't you can't use that word. Apparently, that entire word is owned by like the PGA Tour. So if you buy a re-release of this game, uh, it goes by Big Tournament Golf, which I think is honestly like. When you know that little bit of background, which I didn't look up, somebody brought that information to me. But when you know that little bit of background, it's kind of hilarious because it's like if you asked someone who loves golf, like, hey, what is the PGA Tour? They would say it's the big tournament. Like, yeah. that's exactly what they would it's, call it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to me, I also like it because it's kind of like, you know, OK, well, we're going to we're going to make a, a golf game. It's going to be a tournament. No, 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 no. Make it. Got to sell not, it. You're not sell thinking me on it. large enough. Big tournament golf ship it nailed it <laughs> promote that man <laughs> uh, yeah so we played neo turf masters big tournament golf uh 
1996. This game was originally an arcade game. Uh, and here's, here's my summary of this game. It's a golf game. You play in a bar on an arcade machine, but no, it's not that one. It's not the one with the rolly white ball. <laughs> That's a different one. This is the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Devo, play play a song for us. Play whip it. No, play the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean basically, right? Because if you are a golf, like if you're a golf fan, you might think this game is great because it's very realistic in some ways that we'll talk about. Um, but if you are just a gamer playing on an arcade cabinet, one of the things that's nice about an arcade cabinet is that it can have bespoke controls. Yep. And yes. this game just uses a joystick with buttons, which is fine. I love buttons, but like, it, the second uh, our our uh, patron requested this, I was like, "Oh yeah, the one with the, the 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 like trackball thing." And I went and looked it up, and I was like, "Oh no, it's not that one." <laughs> so my my nostalgia experience for this game is it's not the one I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and uh, I don't have a specific nostalgia. Uh, uh, experience for this but the story i want to share which i shared with you briefly offline is um is that uh, i had a boss of mine uh when i first became a lab manager right so he was very very manager 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 right you know like and so he loved playing golf absolutely loved playing it right and so we would go out and re to real golf real golf yes. real golf right so we would go out to bars you know like after work to discuss the future of the business and talk business things right and if there was any of the uh that that trackball golf game, right? He would be like, "We gotta play this," because he had also logged hundreds of hours playing that. Because basically, this guy was, you know, a a walking stereotype. Like he he played golf, and that was it. That was his whole personality was golf, you know, um, and drinking uh, uh Bud Light, a lot Oof. of Bud Light. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, so uh, anyways, that was that was this this dude, and so uh, I just remembered that he was like, "Oh, you should come play this game." And I was like, "Yeah, sure, man." So I sat down with him, and I almost beat him on the first game. And he was like, "Oh, you played this before?" And I said, "No, I've never played it before." And so he got really upset that I almost beat him, like, and not you know like, oh, fun upset, like actually upset. And I was like, "This that was my first red flag where I was like, this guy might not be a great mentor, right?" But um, I remember at the time uh, thinking, you know, is he said like, you know, we. You, you, do you play golf? Do you play? I was like, no, but I play video games. And you know, this is a video game, right? Like being good at this doesn't make you good at golf, which will actually lead very nicely into the names I've picked this week. Oh, nice. Um, yes. Yeah, it's uh, I, I don't think I thought about this when we played other sports games. But when you, you had told me that story previously, uh, it, it made me realize Oh, every sports video game is infinitely more like video games than it <laughs> yes. is like the sport, right? And that that's true uh -huh. for video games in general. Every war game, every kid who thinks he's a crack shot with an M16, no, you're a crack shot with video games, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can't I pilot a warthog, you can pilot a video games. I remember thinking like, oh man, I'm such a good pilot in StarCraft. If only I could somehow <laughs> pilot drones like StarCraft, you know? But yeah, I mean... Yeah, I'm hot at StarCraft. I'm not sure I'd be a great F-15 pilot, you know? Yeah, I, I will make one exception for people who have, like, those multi, multi-thousand dollar, like, flight simulator rigs. Like, if we're on a plane, and that pilot has a heart attack, and the co-pilot has a simultaneous heart attack, and one of those people who's like, I have a $50,000 Microsoft flight simulator rig at home, I'd be like, well, I'm, it's still a video game, but you have a way better chance than well, yeah, any of us. <laughs> At that point, you're just doing risk analysis, though. So, I mean, like, if, yeah. if you know, yeah, if, if that guy above me, but still below an off-duty <laughs> pilot, you know? Like, <laughs> so, you know, that, that better. Like a, a Leslie perfect. Nielsen joke, right? Is like, the guy is like, you know, I, well, I've, I've played a ton of, of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I have this really expensive rig with, like, a realistic flight stick and everything. And it's like, okay, and, you know, the, the flight attendants, like, usher him into the, the captain's chair and throw the unconscious captain on the floor, and he safely lands the plane, and he's like, ah, now to go back to my day job as a pilot. <laughs> exactly. Like, you should have led with that. Um, <laughs> if you want to support whatever this lead-in is to the game we're eventually going to talk about, uh, you can... Subscribe to the show. Being a listener helps. Subscribing is better. Um, feedback, always appreciated. You can come into the Discord. You can fill out the feedback form on the website. Uh, you can just really, I think, going with the classics, right? Go out onto your local golf course and shout your feedback to us. Yeah. And we yeah, will hear good. it. 
Um, so will other people, but we will hear it. Uh, so, you know, whichever one of us gets to you first, we'll honor your feedback in the appropriate <laughs> way. Uh, if you want to kind of go a bit above and beyond, uh, you can actually watch me play these games on Twitch. I generally stream the games we play as long as they like work well. Um, and I did get to stream a little bit of this actually. So people got to see me absolutely suck at golf. Uh, if you want to go above and beyond, you can leave a rating review in your store of choice. Uh, but I think the best thing you can do is actually just make an episode recommendation to a friend. Find an episode you want a friend to listen to. You know they like that game or you know they hate that game and they'll hate listen. A listen's a listen. Uh, and then you know, send them a link directly to that episode because that, that's better than shouting to strangers. If you have any friends who are going for their PMP, Project Manager certification, you know, like just tell them to listen to the Dr. Mario uh, episode, you know, just whatever works. I, I love that episode, man. That was, that was <laughs> it's a good a, episode. It was a really fun one. It was really fun <laughs> to do. I hope it was fun to listen to. It was fun to, to participate in. If you go uh, truly crazy and you give us money on our Patreon, uh, not only do you get uh, the stuff everybody gets for free, including things like the Discord and Twitch, uh, but you can also get the after show, which is more show. And everybody who supports us gets the after show. But if you support us at a high enough level, we will shout you out on this show. So first, we need to thank our 8-bit classics, Jacob. Who is great at F-Zero, so is therefore a NASCAR driver. Yarno. Who is great at Missile Command and therefore is a great military general. Kevin. Who is amazing at Dr. Mario and is therefore a medical doctor. Jason. Who is great at Act Racer and is therefore both a mercenary and a city planner. And John. Uh, who's fantastic at Civilization 2, who therefore is a great despot. And our 16-bit hero, Michael. Who is amazing at Superman 64 and is therefore terrible. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> that was... I was wondering if that was going to be a Shaggy Dog story, but that, that was worth the build-up, I think. <laughs> Excellent. Actually, I have some honorable mentions here, too. Um, so... Uh, uh, if you're great at uni uniracers, you're obviously great at uni unicycling. If you're great at Harvest Moon, you're obviously a farmer. Good at Mega Man X, you're a great robot assassin. If you're good at Donkey Kong Country, you're an amazing great ape. If you're good at Castlevania, you're a great vampire slayer. If you're good at Yoshi's Island, you're a good philicidal dinosaur. <laughs> um, if you're good at Chrono Trigger, you're a great time traveler. If you're good at Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, you're an amazing musician. And if you're good at Doom 2, Contra 3, Mech Warrior, Math Blaster, Jumping Flash, or Metroid, then you're a great space marine. Math Blasters on the list of Space Marine games. It is. Yeah, I double checked. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. I went I went back through our catalog and and started categorizing these and then I saw Math Blaster and I was like I I really wonder what the plot is to this. And yeah, yeah, you you were you were captured by a bad guy and then you're using math to like stop his evil plan but in space and I'm like, yeah, it's Space Marine. Space Marine. Yeah. Yeah. You can't argue with it. It's canon. Yeah, <laughs> like 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 the cannon you carry as mass blaster, <laughs> which makes you a space marine. Yes, it all comes back. And uh, also, I, so for Yoshi, yeah, and for Yoshi's Island, I, I like I like philicidal dinosaur because you are throwing your eggs, right? You know, and philicide is the act of killing one child or children. Dark. Also, um, <laughs> wouldn't they have to be uh, like fertilized? If they're unfertilized eggs, would it still be philicide? I mean, well, that, that gets real philosophical real fast, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just either alienated or engendered ourselves to a bunch of uh, very conservative listeners if we still somehow have any. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the, the, them, them's the names. All right. Uh, now we can talk about uh, Neo Turf Masters and the way it looks and sounds. Um, man, I just straight up love the way this game looks. This it is does. Like, no, it's gorgeous. <sighs> beautiful, beautiful pixel art. I The one place where I think they actually did themselves a disservice in terms of how it aged is the swing animation for the actual golfers, which to be fair, you do see a lot, right? But like it's, uh, they obviously took real video and like rosterized it or whatever that process is called, like digitize it because it's unnaturally smooth and the way it's, um, artifacted, it, it gives it like a mortal combat look and, the reason I think that that is a shame in terms of how it aged is because in between each hole and on like the, the player select screen, uh, SNK made this game. Uh, there are just absolutely gorgeous sprites. They do incredible sprite work. Like their artists are brilliant and yet they took real humans and like videoed them and then digitized the video. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. I totally get it. I get why 
in an arcade where you have all that powerful arcade hardware, you would want something that looks so buttery smooth. It's the same reason they did it in Mortal Kombat because they, they knew it was going to be on arcade hardware and it looks incredible. But now, you know, 25 years later, 27 years later, it's just like, uh, but I mean, pixel art is right there. <laughs> you already <laughs> did some of it. And and that's the interesting thing. And so what I kind of said was that, you know, they don't have a ton of stuff to animate. So they, very, very lovingly animated everything that they animated, right? You know? So, I mean, which is, is great, right? You know, like you couldn't, you wouldn't expect like this many animations from, you know, Doom where you've got a million different levels and, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? A, a billion different bad guys. Um, to your point though, is that, um, I agree that they should have probably just gone with pixel animation because that would have been way more in keeping with everything else. And the reason why is because I actually, because of our recording schedule, I played this game a fair amount and then didn't play it for a couple of weeks and then went back and played it some more. Um, and literally I, I was just kind of writing notes that I was thinking about, you know, before I played it again. And in my mind, I pictured a pixelated, like multi-frame swing. Mm. Like I had already developed nostalgia goggles for it in those two <laughs> weeks, you know? <laughs> And then, and then I went back and looked at it. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is more of like the, the Mortal Kombat thing where I was like, oh, either, you know, tons of frames or whatever. But I, I had pictured because everything else is shot in that kind of, um, you know, static or multiple sprite, um, way, you know, yeah, like nor- when you normal get a, pixel art. Yeah. When you get a birdie, he's like, yay, I got a birdie. And, you know, like it, it kind of pans across. And when it's, you know, oh, I got an eagle. He's like, oh, yeah, I got an eagle, you know, like that. And so naturally my brain said, and obviously that and everywhere else, but they said, no, we're going to do it differently in this one place. And and I agree with you. It, it does weirdly stick out because I can imagine that if you're thinking back to having played this game as a child, that, uh, you, you have probably done what I did in two weeks, which is, you know, remember it incorrectly. And if I feel that, and this might be a broad sweeping statement, but that (laughs) if, if, if you are doing the analysis on how it held up, if you're remembrance of it does not match what it actually was then it was out of place you know yeah or or if you don't look at it and go like oh yeah right even if it like brings you back to reality but like with good feels and and i'm because i i always have uh you know screenshots and reference stuff up along with my notes so snk did uh i i think it's called sell out or colored outline but basically, like, things do not have big black outlines, right? They're not drawn like Looney Tunes. So where the border of, like, each blade of grass is, you don't have, like, a black outline, right? So everything is is very just saturated colors so that it looks very, like, nice and it pops. But not you, right? When you are swinging the golf club, you actually have a black outline that makes it look like you are standing in front of a matte painting. Now... To the artist's credit, I'm looking at this in a still, and when you see it in the game, it's in motion and it's quick, right? And you're not even really staring at the the golfer. You're looking at the the HUD, which we'll talk about, I'm sure, when we get to gameplay. So, like, how big of a deal this actually is, I am probably playing it up a little bit. But then when you finish the hole, if you right, if you get an eagle and you're like, yeah, and you're like trying to be humble, but you're super satisfied, or if you did terrible and you like break the club over your knees, like that that much higher quality it's static right it's not an animation but that much higher quality drawing doesn't have a black outline so it's like are you the same guy from a minute ago because that guy's black outline like over there <laughs> you have black outline on but over here you don't so it, it just it, i know this is very um my opinion like this art is beautiful and the fact that it is so smooth and so high res for the time was absolutely staggering but my opinion is like, no, you already drew cool cartoon characters. Just use the cool cartoon characters you drew. Yeah, again, it, it's just it, it's not in keeping with the rest of the game, you know. And I, I feel like that, to your point, this was something that was probably fairly new at the time. And they said, hey, look at this new hotness that we can do to get this buttery smooth animation. And it's like, yeah, but you were so busy. You were so preoccupied with whether or not you could. You didn't stop to think if you should, you know, and and and, and again, like I don't. I don't begrudge them that decision. You know, I, I very well may have made the same one. I'm like, hey, look at this new hotness. This does the thing that I want it to do. And it's like, yes, but if you can't do it everywhere, then you're just doing it in this one place. Then it will kind of stand out oddly, as opposed to in Mortal Kombat, where it was everyone 
And so it, it feels like, okay, this is the way everybody looks as opposed to this place where it's like, oh, it looks like this 90% of the time and this other way 10% of the time. And that's weird. Yeah, the the color, I don't know what you'd call it, color choices, color grading, um, that is what creates a lot of the the pop out effect because the golfer has so much detail and their colors are a little bit more realistic. Whereas the environment is still very high detail, but not nearly as high as a digitized video. And then it's super saturated, like gorgeous artwork, but obviously artwork, right? You would never look at it and be like, Oh, this is photorealistic. It's not even like, Oh, they digitized a real golf course that they captured. Like everything in the environment is fabricated so it just creates that like have you ever um used or seen someone use one of those like uh virtual golf things where it's like a screen and you hit the ball into the screen and then like sensors measure like where the ball would have gone uh only on futurama yeah oh, okay but you conceptually you know <laughs> what i'm talking about um yes. they actually have one at a gym near my house and Every time I think about going in there, I'm like, to do what? Like, to, <laughs> to take up time from someone who actually wants to use it, like, while I go, <laughs> um, so to I've never actually. To purpose. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it has, the the one that's near my near my house has glass walls. So, like, it's really easy to, to see a guy standing in front of a very high fidelity backdrop that is still a backdrop. And this, to me, looks a lot like that, which I don't think actually takes away from the game or anything, but we're only talking about the audio visuals. So I get to be nitpicky about this. Absolutely. Um, and so also to your point, right, is that um, there, there, there is a HUD. I felt that the HUD was elegant. I thought it, was, I thought it did its job. It only gives you the information that you need, you know, um, and it's all, it's all germane to, to what it is that you're doing, right? Is that you're saying like, okay, I'm, I'm in my stance. So that way I'm going to fire the, it straight ahead, right? This is the club I'm using. And then it also does give you the approximate yardage that you're going to hammer it for, which is super helpful for a uh, neophyte like myself who does not play golf. So it's like, oh, do you want to use a one wood or a four iron? And I'm like, I don't know what any of that is. Um, <laughs> Would you like a golf club or a different golf club? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's like, well, one of these golf clubs hits it hard. Well, I want to do that. It's like, and one of them also hits it hard. Well, which I want to hit it really hard, like really hard. Um, and so, you know, it gives you, you know, shot power, whether you're doing it high, low, and, uh, and, you know, the, and, and the overall like map itself, you know, all, all really, really great stuff. Um, so as far as audio visual goes, I really felt that the HUD was very elegant and it gave you the information you needed, really no more, really no less. Um, the way that that then forces you with a controller to interact with the game uh, gets weird, you know? I mean, it, it, not any more so than any other sports game, but that's where, like, my my compliments, I guess, and stop, you know? So, audio-visual-wise, beautiful. Love the HUD. Thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do agree, because uh, I think very specifically for someone who doesn't know much about golf is this gives you all of the information you need to be successful. Right. And even if you don't know, like the, there's the, the wind compass, you know, like here's mm -hmm. the direction the wind's going and how strong it's blowing. Even if you don't know exactly how much that should matter, if you hit the ball and then it curves way in the direction of the wind, then your brain will go, ah, that is what happens when the wind is blowing. Right. So like, just like with real wind in playing real golf, like you would very quickly put that together. But now you have the benefit of a an exact number, right? And and a perfect measurement, something most golfers probably don't get. So do, do, do they now that you're saying it like, do they? Like I would, it wouldn't be surprised me if somebody had like an anemometer, you know, and like. Right. But Relate real wind does not blow at exactly one speed constantly. So like as you are winding up. It does up, when it... I ask it to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yes. So it's not the measuring that's the problem so much as the magical consistency, but there's <laughs> magical consistency that goes along with the measurement. Um, but but you can vary. I mean, on, on literally your first swing, I think you would be able to figure out like, okay, if I change my stance, this is what happens if I change my club. You know, I can see the yardage go up or down. Um, in fact, the the term for curving the ball away from you is a slice, and the term for curving the ball toward you is a hook. And when it when you change your stance, that's what 
changing whether it's a slice or a hook, but there's a giant arrow on screen. So even if you're like, what the hell is a slice? There's a big arrow with a curve in it. And the more you change your stance, the more sharp the angle in the arrow gets. So like you could come to this, I think with, as long as you had like a rudimentary understanding of the world, you would be able to pretty quickly map it onto golf. Um, but there are some leaps you have to make, right? Like it never tells you what par is. You don't know that like if you, cause I screwed around a little bit. Like if you screw around long enough, they're like, you're done. You're, you're out. You're a professional golfer. You hit it like eight times. You're done. You're done <laughs> with this hole. Right. So like there's stuff like that. You have to like get just through exposure. I think it does tell you what par is though. No, I'm, I mean like what that means. Oh, oh, okay. Right. Oh, like, like it says like, oh, it's par. a par. Like, yeah. The HUD says like, oh, okay. it's a par four. It's par five. It's par three. But it's like, what, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. That, that's interesting. Par is such like a, 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 a common colloquialism in, in English that, you know, it's just like, oh yeah, it's, that, you know, how, how are you doing? They're, they're on par, you know? Oh no, totally. And, but that's <laughs> the thing is then if you had only ever used it as like a euphemism and then someone was like, where'd that come from? You're like, I don't know. Like I can define the euphemism, which I assume is related to the source material. And you know, the really messed up thing about using par euphemistically is if you say like, Oh, that's subpar. Like it's wrong. That's a bad thing. Yeah. 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 Subpar. It's like, that should be good, but it's like, Oh, but that's bad because literally at that point you're just using par as a synonym for average, Right. you know? So that <laughs> always bugs me, you know, it's like, I, I want to be able to go up to somebody and be like, hey, I gave you a great review. You're doing subpar. You know? <laughs> keep, keep it up. And then just walk away and just like never address it. <laughs> yeah, never, ever them, explain. Watch, watch their wheels turn, you know? Yeah. Um, on the uh, audio side of things, my biggest uh, complaint would be the music in this is actually quite good, but there are exactly four songs. There's one for each course, right? And so if you like a particular course and you play that one a lot, you will be hearing that same piece of music over and over and over and over and over and over for forever and ever and ever and ever. And that just, I get it right. This is an arcade game. It's a golf game. It's meant to be played for like a little bit in a bar where it's noisy. Right. So like they probably weren't thinking like, Oh man, this game has to have a bang and soundtrack. But when you're playing it on a home console, it's like, uh, okay, this songs it's, it's getting repetitive, but not, as repetitive as like Tetris or Dr. Mario music, because in between each hole, there's a little like you did it or you suck riff that plays uh, when the, the, cause this is the end of a golf tournament. right? So there's like the, the final course in the end of a golf tournament. And uh, there's like announcers and they have their little, like, you know, this is what's coming up on the next thing. Right. Like while they describe what the, the course is like and what the par is and everything. And so then the same song restarts. Like, so imagine if you were playing Tetris and it's super repetitive, but you can never zone out to it because at some random interval, the music drops out for like 15 seconds and then comes back. So you don't even get to just treat it as like white noise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, I actually thought that the music for this was kind of uh, subpar. <laughs> what do I mean? Was it good or was it bad? <laughs> don't explain it. <laughs> so moving on uh controllers uh, no. uh no so i actually i didn't i didn't love the music just because to me it was very uh elevator elevator music which is not bad but it was like da -na 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 -da -na and i just said "Ooh, that jazz is smooth it's almost as buttery smooth as that animation of them swinging <laughs> but uh anyways it, it's fine um it but i think the reason why i didn't care for it is because yeah it got really annoying and again I know that I know that this is just a port from an arcade cabinet, but as we have said many times in many different ports to an arcade cabinet, which is that like there's a way to do this, you know, and and it's and just like with all things in life, it's thoughtfully, you know. So like again, what they basically did was they said, hey, we've got this arcade cabinet, let's throw it on a system and let's move on with life, right? As opposed to let's throw it onto a system and then play test it for a little while and then get some feedback and see if there's any any low rent changes we can make. And you know what? One that I thought of for this is because I thought like, okay, well, I can just play without the mute, without the sound on, but it is very satisfying to hear like that, you yeah. know, and like the, the sound effects yeah, the are sound very, effects are great. yeah, are awesome. And I don't want to lose that. So I'd really love it if like with most mobile app games, there was a 
music off button and sound off button, you know, because I, I could just say like, okay, I just I just don't want to listen to the music, but I do want to, you know, listen to the wind blowing into the, you know, nice job and all the other sound effects. I want to hear all of that. I just don't need to hear that smooth jazz for one more second. Yeah, no, I, I had the same thought uh, and it was less about the um, the sounds of golfing, even though I I would miss those, but I would miss even more the inexplicable dialogue like there there are just choices i can't quite explain so one of the announcers is because this game was originally you know snk japanese company so this game was originally japanese and then uh it was brought over to america and i maybe other places probably other places but they seem to have recorded some of the dialogue in the Japanese game in English. And so some of the dialogue is spoken by a woman who clearly has a Japanese accent, which is fine. The thing that's inex- Yeah. <laughs> the thing that's inexplicable is that some of the things she says has like an echo as though she's in a studio. And then other words are like pure recordings. Like she is speaking directly into like a high quality microphone in a voice booth. And that the fact that it changes in a single sentence where like the first two words will have this weird echo. Like she's supposed to be, she's on scene, right? Like recording live from the, the big tournament golf game. And then it will drop out to like, I am obviously in a voice booth that obviously happened in post because obviously they recorded all of it in a real voice booth with an actual voice actress. And then applied an effect to only part of what she says and then there are other lines that i guess because they're more um informational where like the things she's the the things the narrator is saying are relevant like how many yards is this how, what's the par here that must have in the japanese version that must have been in japanese and so they re-recorded those lines in english with a guy and so it's like, are two people really calling this one game, but they're not talking. There's like no banter. They're not interacting with each other in any way. Are they in different places? Like, it's just weird choices, but I just, I loved it. Like it was just so, this is an old arcade game. I was just like, this is amazing. <laughs> this is absolutely amazing. Yeah, no, I uh, agreed. And, and now in my mind, it's just, you have like the, the, the Japanese woman and the American man who are both sitting next to each other. But there is a language barrier, so they're just not. <laughs> That's just why there's no banter. Yeah, there's no banter because, like, like she only knows how to say the the hand. No, I only know that one speech and this one explaining it. You know, like that's all the English <laughs> that, that that she knows. And the, the the other guy's like, okay, so I know, like, what do you want to talk about? And she's like, on the green. And it's like, cool, yeah, all right, so fun. Um, <laughs> one other, and this is such a throwaway visual note, but I just I saw it, and I. I don't, again, I don't know anything about, I don't play any sports balls, you know, like I just, we, we're lucky that we're friends because the first place that we met was through Ultimate Frisbee. And I feel like if <laughs> that's, if that's where, where we tried to like leverage our friendship, you would be like, who, what, what is this guy? Does he have any value as a human being? And the answer is not when it comes to Ultimate Frisbee or any sports game. would like to think of myself as a very like athletic human, but when it comes to putting, pointing those athletics towards like getting a ball to a certain place in any, now. No, zeros. No, no, no <laughs> skills whatsoever. Like anytime <laughs> once a ball gets involved and that ball's got to go somewhere, like I just I fall apart. Um, so I don't know anything about golf, right? Um, but in when you're when you're putting, like there's a bunch of people who are and I pulled this up so I could look at it again, just to make sure that I, I was remembering it correctly. So there's a bunch of people who are like like standing, like watching, you know, like watching you play the golf. And there's one lazy ass sitting down, like just, <laughs> is that a thing that, like he is sitting full on, sitting, like he's not like crouching down, like sitting on his heels, you know, like to like rest his, his legs. He is full blown, like having a picnic, sitting on his bum, like just watching you play. Is that a thing that happens? Cause that, that, that feels lazy. S- sitting on the ground, right? Not like in a folding chair. Correct. Yes, he is okay. sitting like like butt on the gr- on the green or on the ground. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a real golf tournament is many hours long. So, like, if you were watching a golf game live, like, yeah, I could imagine. Like, man, I've been standing standing here for hours. Like, I'm gonna sit down. But but like, don't you you get in and out of the cart though, right? You know, like 
not the spectators. They're just on foot. So wait, wait, wait. The spectators have to like walk all the way from like where they swung the thing to where it landed. They got to walk the whatever thousand yards. Uh, it's like three or four hundred. But no, I, I, they, and I have no idea. I think, they, <laughs> I think they, uh, they spectate from the green. Mm-hmm. So like they oh, go okay, from like so. green to green. So they are still going the whole length of the course. But I don't. Uh, do you watch? I assume that everybody did. Like, I actually don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like some, somebody, somebody at us because I assume that like <laughs> everybody watched the person hit the ball. And then everybody got into their nice little white white mini cars and then drove around, right? I, I and don't then, think spectators get transportation. <laughs> is that not included, or do you have to pay extra? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know why anybody would go watch golf live anyway. So like, <laughs> <laughs> but people do. So yeah. all right. Um, well, anyways, that was that was my last visual note. If you got anything else, you say that, and I'm gonna look this up while you talk. <laughs> Um, so I do, uh, actually have one other, uh, audio note that I just, it's like silly, but it just brought me a tremendous amount of delight, which is because this is a straight arcade port. One of the things that they had to do was break the coin slot. So one of the buttons on your controller literally just adds more credits because they didn't take away the credit system where you put in quarters. They just allow you to press a button that tells the game you inserted a quarter. And you can just do that as much as you want. And it just makes the little like noise that is unique to you put another quarter in the machine. And I just, dude, every time I sat down to play, I did the exact same thing. I just put in enough credits to get it up to 69. And then (laughs) if I screwed up and I lost some credits, I would like get it back up. You know, I'd spend some credits to continue playing golf and then like pay back up. And I was just like, this is so dumb. But honestly, if they took this away, I would not be enjoying this. Like, if if this is a thing they had been like, oh, well, it's a console port. We don't need to have credits in there. We'll we'll just take that out entirely. Like, I would have lost out on this very tiny bit of joy. And there is something. And and I, I haven't put a tremendous amount of thought into this. So I, I don't know if I have anything profound to say about it. But when we played uh, Rampage for the Nintendo, that you just press start and you could just play infinitely. Right. So like they, it's still yeah. the credit system, but you could just continue infinitely. The fact that you have to choose to put more credits in, I actually like that additional step. It, it makes a difference. It, it does. It's weird. It's weird. But like the, the difference though, is that like you can then you can choose to be like, ha- I, I have one quarter. So you put in your one quarter and then that's all that you play. Right. Or, and, and you know, you know what it is. It's the difference between logging your calories for the day and not logging your calories for the day you know where it's like it's the same thing you can eat whatever you want no one's stopping you from eating you have (laughs) we're in america right we have an infinite amount of food basically you know so there's nothing that's stopping you from eating but the fact that like you then have to go log it you're more likely to be like ah do i really want to eat that as opposed to i can just eat whatever i want you know so in rampage it's like hey man you know infinite lives do whatever you want you're like okay well I'm, i'm just I, I I don't know what to do with that, but it's supposed to like, hey man, you can you can put as many credits as you want to. You want to spend four hundred dollars? Go ahead, champ. Go ahead. But remember that it did take you four hundred quarters to get this job done. You know, it's it's that little tweak does make a difference. Yeah. Did, were you, were you able to find if uh, people are transported from green to green? So I believe so. I it, interestingly, when I googled it, it only gave me like specific rules. Um, but it looks like that you're correct that they do walk unless you have a documented disability, in which case they will give you a golf cart. And then they have tons of rules on how you employ that golf cart. Uh, <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Cause, uh, and, and yeah, so it's the use of golf carts by coaches, fans, and spectators as part of the gallery, um, is restricted. The only exception to this restriction is, is the cases of coaches, fans, and spectators with a medical condition, handicap or disability. So, and that, that's for the Missouri State High School Activities Association, but it's also the same for the NAIA Men's Golf Championship and a couple of other ones I was able to find. So I couldn't find like a general thing, but each place seemed to have its own rules and all the rules were, nah, you you either play golf and you get a golf cart or you, you walk in. I kind of, I, I don't hate that. Like if, <laughs> if you're going to go somewhere and watch someone else do an activity, you know, maybe, uh, maybe get up. 
Maybe walk a few yep. feet. Like that's I don't hate that, right? For people oh, who yeah. can't, like obviously, yes, okay, they don't you know, they get an exception, but like for everybody else, like you're just watching somebody else do a thing. Like get up, walk. This, everything you just said is why I hate football parties. Man. <laughs> <laughs> we're all going to get together and watch other people do things. And, and because we're watching other people do, doing things, I'm going to consume 3,000 calories. So I have the energy to watch other people do things. It's exhausting. Uh, it's the worst. It's exhausting being this vigilant. I might have to go home early. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're ready to talk about gameplay. Yeah, let's do it. Um, So... I have interesting feelings about this gameplay and you like <laughs> golf games. I, I do. When, uh, when this request came in from this listener, I was like, Oh, thank God. Now I don't have to take the bullet for this. <laughs> like, cause <laughs> I do weirdly enjoy golf games. Like a, a lot. I've played a ton of different silly ones, super realistic ones. We sports. Like I just, something about it, man. I just, I like golf games. <laughs> hey man. And, and good for you. Uh, so I'm, I don't, dislike them but again i don't i don't sports ball in any capacity right so you know the the fantasy aesthetic is not there for me and i've got notes on that but here's the thing that uh, i kind of want to discuss with you um the the minute that you you mentioned it earlier which is that most sports games are more a video game than sports you know so like you have to not like golf you have to like golf games you know because you because i hate real golf (laughs) <laughs> like I, just to be clear like i only like golf video games i do not like i've played real golf like on on um like driving ranges i zero interest could not care less yeah interestingly like i i haven't i played golf once when i was like 10 or something and i haven't played since uh and i had an opportunity almost had an opportunity recently i had a conflict and and the person said i was like that golf i might like because he said is he's he said you want to come play golf i'm like i have no idea what i'm doing he goes none of us do we just go out we play a serious round we play like two or three holes fairly seriously and then we basically just play cro- uh croquet or whatever it is for you, <laughs> <laughs> you know? he's like we all get out we, we have a few drinks during the day we uh we get silly towards the end i'm like i, I might like that kind of golf that doesn't sound like hmm. What I like to believe golf is, but I like that. <laughs> All of that sounds like stuff I like. Yeah. Th- this also reminds me of uh, growing up with uh, male figures in my life saying any sport where you can eat and drink while playing the sport is not a sport. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's an activity. But uh, just just like bowling. Oh, no. All of our bowling people unsubscribed. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, but using a controller is the death of these games, right? And as far as them like really being like an outlet for that fantasy or for that activity, right? The minute that you, you do that, you, you're not playing golf or playing bowling or playing football or playing anything. You're, you're playing a video game that is like themed for this, you know, like that, that, that has this coat of paint on it. And, you know, so then, then that kind of made me start to think about like, okay, well, so then what are the, mechanics under the hood right so like we, we've kind of established them once you once you say like okay look it's not it's not a sports car it's just a thing that has a sports car chassis put on it like a sports car it's you know like paint. like a race car bed <laughs> yeah right so then then at that point it's like okay then what's actually under the hood though which is is something i'd like to discuss but i want to get your feedback on like could, could, once you once you put a controller like a P- ps4 controller behind this the the game's any sports game is lost, you know, as far as being a, a true outlet for that fantasy. Yeah. And, and I do think that's an interesting way to put it because I have and would spend more time playing a golf video game with a regular controller than I have spent and would spend playing Wii Golf because Wii Golf very quickly becomes how frustrating is the Wii sensor, <laughs> the game, right? Because it now you are asking me to do something that is pretty analogous to the actual activity, right? Cause the, the trackball thing is like in no way analogous to the actual activity, but, but swinging the Wiimote kind of is like, it's a hell of a lot closer than, you know, pressing a button when the gauge is at the right spot. Ostensibly with the Wii remote, if you weighted it properly, you could make it almost one to one, right? Like if you oh, sure. plug yeah. plug the Wiimote like into a weighted golf club, you know, like then you're doing it, you know, you're, you're golfing. Yeah. And, and, uh, I, I, because I have worked in sales and salespeople do apparently all have to play golf, like by law, it seems. Um, 
I do actually know a little, like some weird little things about golf, which, and one of them is like the way you turn your body when you like drive a ball is that your body turns and your legs don't. And so it's really hard on your knees. It's really bad. Right. And so like when you're playing Wii golf, if you know that you are trying to like, Oh, I'm going to position my body. Right. It's like, okay, so now it's just as bad for your knees as playing real golf. Right. So, <laughs> so anyway, I say all that to say like one of the, the things I noticed playing this that I, I think is part of the attraction to a golf sports game in particular is I like, uh, like fast twitch games, um, fighting games, shooters, uh, you know, high, uh, high action roguelikes, like, but they're very intense and you have to do a lot of buttons like a lot until you die or you lose the round or you win or whatever in a golf game, you have like your, your accuracy or your power meter and then your accuracy meter. So it's like, it's like two button, literally two button presses that require like a fast thumb. And then you get to like, see that play out. So it's, it's like this tiny, tiny little, like toe dip into like, ah, I am good with a video game controller because I can get the needle to stop not at a hundred percent, like a loser, but at 110% where the power meter actually glows green and it's all cool. And you feel like you're awesome at golf, even though you're not in the slightest. Right. So like, that's why the controller to me is actually like, that's what I want. Right. (laughs) It's not hurting the experience. It's making the experience possible. Right. And and that's the thing, right? Is that, and, and that's totally legit, is that I think though then it, it, it is still then a video game, right? Because the thing is that I could imagine seeing myself putting a bunch of hours into like a, a sports video game, like, like golf, if it was helping me be better at golf, right? But, you know, because then at that point I could be like, hey, you know, I didn't, I didn't super enjoy this, but hey, I, I, I got a skill out of it, right? Um, this this don't do that um and and actually so i was thinking about it and i had two video game analogies that i think it's it's kind of like a, a little bit of both of them but it's a little bit like mario rpg right so and here's why is because you basically like go into if you strip away some of the uh like leveling mechanics but you you make your loadout so you basically say i'm gonna pick this club i'm gonna pick this dance i'm gonna pick this golfer you know this is this is my loadout right so once you have that, then it's just a matter of can you press the button at the right time, you know, and then lather, rinse, repeat, right? You know, so you you make a plan and then you you see if you can press the button correctly, right? And that's that's kind of the main elements behind it, you know, is it's yeah. very similar, similar to that feel, you know? Yeah, I don't I feel like Super Mario RPG is asking a little bit more of you and I don't mean that as a way of complimenting super mario rpg so much as a way of like correct and that is i think part of what i like about golf games is you <laughs> yeah. you right because like uh we, we we haven't said yet but there's what five golfers six golfers and they all have their various stats and their the stats are they matter right like if someone has real high uh drive whatever the estimate for how far they can drive is they can drive way further right if someone has a uh, really good accuracy or they're really good at putting, like you do actually feel those differences in gameplay, which means you can select a golfer either to magnify the things you're good at or to try and, you know, uh, raise the water level and the things you suck at. And then, uh, you, you know, you, you have all the information available to you on the HUD. It's like, okay, I need to hit this far. This club can hit that far. The wind is going in this direction and it's really strong. So I'm going to go, cause I think there's three levels of hook and slice, right? Like how, how steep that curve is. And so I'm going to like plug in all these variables, but then all I have to do to exit the plan is hit the power where I want it right on that, you know, zero to 110 scale. Uh, which I will have things to say about in a minute. And then uh, the accuracy, um, which low and high is literally the height you are swinging the club. Like, do you crash it into the ground or do you like under swing and the club goes over the top of the ball? So like you hit it and then you, you get to see if your calculations were correct. Like I, I plugged in all these numbers. I predicted that the ball will go here, did it. And I, I kind of like that feeling like it's, 
because that to me is where the actual game is. It's not in any way analogous to the actual sport. It's just like, oh, I plug in these numbers and then I I predict X will happen. Was I right? And if I was wrong, how wrong was I and what do I have to do to compensate? And the reason why I compared it to Mario RPG in the sense is because Mario RPG does also have that secondary part where you press a button. Yeah, the, the, to, the like, time to like bounce. Yeah, but uh, but I mean, it, it, very similar in feel, you know, to like Darkest Dungeon where I'd say like, okay, well, you know, this person deals this type of damage and they have this percentage chance of dealing blight damage and this is going to hit three people, which means that I will overall deal more damage. So um, I think that that's the way to go. I'm going to go ahead and light a torch because that'll increase my chance to hit, you know, and you do all that sort of stuff and then you say, okay, now do it. How do I do? You know, like, so um, it does very much so have that feel to it as opposed to, you know, proper golf so uh so yeah so like i said like i think that you know again not not to say that that makes the game bad but it does make it super not golf you know? super not golf yeah yeah <laughs> which is why like when people are like oh oh, oh, oh are you are, are you're good at golfing games sure <laughs> are you good at golf it's not not the same that's not germane to the situation yeah so. now to this game's credit i think more than what you see in um a soccer game a football game uh this game because the hud exists like mm-hmm. it is giving you a pretty clear indication of like the 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 fantasy is like you would have all this information in your head right you know how hard you're swinging you know how far this particular club can hit you know how far you can hit with this particular club right like this is all stuff that would be internal to the player's mind and you know, they're like mind body connection, but that you have visualized on the HUD in a super video gamey way, right? There's nothing diegetic about it. They didn't even make the wind thing look like a wind sock. Like it's just a box <laughs> with an arrow and a number. Um, in like a football game, you usually don't have like the literal numbers and stuff in your face, right? It doesn't say like, well, if you hold a for three seconds, you'll throw the ball 25 yards. It's like, no, you are passing to that receiver and they'll get it, right? It's like, you don't know exactly how far they are, but like you just know as the quarterback to throw it yay hard and it will get to them, but there's no yay hard meter on screen. You just select the receiver and the ball goes to them and it's a perfect spiral, right? So like there's, by trying to make the things that make a real athlete successful, like obfuscated away behind the controls. There's something like less honest about that (laughs) to me (laughs) than being like, this is the information that would be in your head because this is all happening in real time. But golf is a much slower paced game than a lot of other sports. Right. But it's, it's like, this is all the information that would be in your head. Now make the calculations that a golfer would make and trust that you can execute on them because you are a professional golfer, which is, Again, like I, I feel like a complete ass defending this because I would say basically the opposite things about most of the sports games we played. Right? It's just like, ah, oh, this is dumb. Why wouldn't I just go play this sport? <laughs> well, that's the thing is that you know, again, you just really have to kind of accept the fact that playing this game is nothing like playing the sport. One of the things that could be interesting, uh, just while we're talking about it, that could be fun in a sports game is if you wanted to add rpg mechanics to it right um which i could be fun uh i mean mo- most be... modern sports games have some kind of leveling yeah skill skill i very i think they're mostly like that kind of tony hawk style where it's like here's your skills you can dump points right. into them or your actions naturally build up certain things yeah I, I think that what would be interesting too in in golf because i think that yeah you could say okay i want to spend my skill points in driving or putting or whatever right but to also have like a you know observations or whatever and and have things on the hud unlock as you become more attuned to them or become more accurate you know so like for example wind right is you could say like hey how fast is the wind blowing it's like somewhere between one and ten miles per hour right but as you dump points into it, it's like ah really it's between four to six miles per hour because you become as you have golfed more and you have become more attuned to that you're like okay this is actually i can feel how hard the wind's blowing and i'm way more aware of it or you know like hey i know that this is how far this driver can generally drive because i can know that number but i've now been playing golf for a while so i know that i using this this one will drive it this far you know that 
that could be kind of fun, you know, to kind of represent a more seasoned golfer who's more aware of all of those variables versus a, a newer one, you know? Yeah. And I am, I wonder if a game like that might in some capacity, probably not in the, the HUD way you're describing, but there's definitely RPG element sports games for every sport. But I'm realizing like there is a hard cut off in my life for when I stopped seeking out new golf games because the ones I had <laughs> access to were good enough. Right. So like, and it's the Wii, right? Like I had, I played a lot of hot shots golf on the PlayStation uh, and then like the various Wii golf games and then other, you know, random arcade games smattering. But like, there's a, there's a cutoff where golf games were still trying to be this, right. They were trying to be whatever you would call this and not leaning more into the fantasy you're going through your entire career as a golfer and maybe the coach you select who's training you changes you know how many skill points you get during a training session like I, and i'm not being hyperbolic there is an entire version of madden i think it's called like coach mode or like like t owner maybe where you're like the mm -hmm. team owner where you literally don't play football games you are responsible for like the care and feeding of the team. And then the computer plays the football game. And it's like, <laughs> Oh my God, that's like, you're, you're playing dungeons and dragons wearing a football Jersey at that point. Like it's yeah. just, which is fine. But like, that's so different from this and games like this, that I have no firsthand experience with those. Yeah. No, I, I always remember when like in penny arcade where it was like, no, 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 get 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 this okay so you know your 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 receivers are your dps your linemen are your tanks and and it's like but then if that were true that would make football a game you know <laughs> uh, yes yeah, so, precisely so um uh because i do want to talk about your your hud stuff but i i think that so so like i said like the the play-by-play -play interactions felt very mario rpg to me right you you, you make a plan, you press a button to execute, and you you see, to your point, you see how all of these mental calculations, how it played out. So that's very RPG-like. I feel like the overall life cycle of the game, right, the the, the game cycle iteration, uh, to me actually feels a lot like Mario Kart, which is that, you know, you've got the same handful of courses, you play them over and over again, you learn all of their little intricacies, and it's way better when you play with a friend, you know? Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> <laughs> but that's what, what the kind of feel I got from it, which is it's, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah. So because, you know, I didn't I didn't play enough to play the same same courses over and over again. But I imagine you'd be like, oh, yeah, on this course, it's best to kind of like slice it here and then put it put put it here because then I can angle it directly in and then I can shoot for eagle as opposed to if I just drive it straight, then I'm going to have to do this other thing. And then I'm best I'm going to do is birdie and, you know, like you get that same thing with Mario Kart where you say like, ah, well, if I hook close here and then if I take this shortcut and, you know, do all this other sort of stuff, you know? And then again, it's all way better when you're playing with a friend as opposed to just playing against the computer where you're like, okay, hey, look, I did something cool. And no, nobody saw it. <laughs> well, uh, golf is, I think, among the sports games we've played, or at least the ones that I could think of that we've played, is far more a solitary experience during the actual playing of the game and all of the social stuff would happen as you're walking, you know, from, from course to course and you're chatting with the other players, you're chatting with your caddy or whatever. So like a hundred percent of the social element of golf, the activity in real life is not present in this game. It is just playing the game of golf, which I don't think is unusual, right? Like baseball games, football game but those games are so much more action oriented that it's like oh i'm in the action all the time and it's like right but a lot of golf is walking to continue play golf and none of that happens here and so even though the the gaming experience of like playing the actual activity would be very singular in real life just like it is in the, the neo turf masters it is nice to play sports games with other people because sports are typically played with other people right it's yes. just that is one thing that really carries over basically a hundred percent in real life i play this game with other people and that is part of the enjoyment and digitally i would like to play this game with other people because that is part of the enjoyment absolutely no i i agree with that and again you know uh what is a community right it's not necessarily a course that for every game i would definitely say that cyberpunk 2077 is one where 
No community. I just sit down and I, I play that one by myself because of the horrible, horrible things I do to people in that game. <laughs> in fact, I do not want community. No one can know. Yeah, no, no, no one can know. I, I, I have a fun fun new technique I've started using in the after show I can uh, I can share with you that's particularly awful. And Me- Megan actually had notes. She was like, this is the world you live in? Oh, my God. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I am the one who knocks. Um, so anyways. So not not for every game, but definitely for sports ball games. But what, what, what's your thing with the HUD? So uh, I when we were talking about the visuals, the HUD is I think laid out in a nice way. It's very video gamey, but it's not distracting. It's pushed out to the edges, right? Um, the the thing where I actually got kind of frustrated, and the thing that ended up coloring my ultimate rating for this game a lot was you are told how far you are as the crow flies from the pin, right? Which is useful, right? Especially if it's like a fairly straight course, which most of them are. They're not like a lot of twisty turny um, courses, but what you're given for your, um, like your club selection is this is how far this club can hit, but really it's an estimate because if you have, if you're using the golfer who has the maximum drive ability, and you can consistently nail it at 110%, which I was weirdly good at. Like if it said, Oh, you can suck this 280 yards. I was like, yeah, try 370. Like this is going (laughs) way the hell farther. And where I ran into a problem with the HUD is it, it very clearly shows you a little like top down of the course. Here's you, here's the pin. Here's the direction you are currently aiming. If you hit in a perfectly straight line, but the length of that line never changes. If you switch from one wood, the one that hits it the furthest, to putter, the one that does not hit it the furthest, the line stays, the, it, it's just a direction, right? It's not a true vector because you don't know anything about the speed it is going to travel in that direction. And I cannot think of another golf game that I have spent much time with that would curse you in that way. Because... <laughs> So many times I was like, okay, so the full length of the course is 400 yards. And if I hit it as hard as I can with this club, it says 200 yards, which means I can really do more like 240, but there's a sand trap roughly midway. Am I going to hit it? Am I not like, and so it, I understand that what I just described is literally the game of golf. But yes, I'm, I'm like, not, like that is a that is a video I, game. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not playing golf. I'm playing a video game. I want my video game golfer to have near perfect knowledge of how far he can hit the ball and to be able to gauge, oh, that sand trap, because that's a thing you could ask your caddy. You could say, how far away is that sand trap in the middle of the course? And they would say, uh, I think it's about 180 yards. And it's like, well, I can consistently hit 280 yards, so I will sail over that thing. But if they said it's 265 yards, I would say, oh, man, on my best day, I can only do about 280. So I'm actually going to undershoot it a little bit or I'm going to steer to one side or something. But like this is the one piece of information I felt like I could not plug into my calculations. And it pissed me off so much. The problem is your caddy's drunk, you know, so like, God damn it, Jeremy. Um, (laughs) And and you also see this same problem uh, magnified tremendously when you are either in heavy rough or a sand trap. If you need to hit out of a sand trap, it tells you that with a sand wedge, you can hit a ball 60 yards. And it's like, right. If I was on the fairway, this club would hit the ball 60 yards, but I'm not using a sand wedge on the fairway. I'm using the sand wedge in a sand trap. Sorry a bunker right so i'm using my sand wedge to try and escape the bunker and i just don't understand why you're still acting like i'm going to hit this the maximum (laughs) distance i'm definitely not right and so it just made every time i had to get out of a a (laughs) a rough a rough situation it made it feel like suddenly i am an incompetent golfer because i don't have access to the information i've been using to make my calculations so that that was like that was surprisingly frustrating to the overall experience because it, it, it ruined the illusion that it's like, Oh, I'm able to execute using all these factors because I'm a professional golfer. And then suddenly I was drunk and I had no idea how far I was going to hit the ball. 
Yeah. So, uh, so, so that was the problem is when you got into the bunker, you had to use an open faced club, a sand wedge. Exactly. An open faced club mm, sandwich. Open faced club <laughs> sandwich. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Right when you said that, I was, I was like, oh God, I have to say this. It, it's, it, it's going to feel like nails on a chalkboard if I don't. Um, all of this is true. Yeah. No, actually. So, uh, I, I concur with that. And, and, you know, interestingly, I would be more okay with saying, you know, Oh, that's well. That's 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 part of the game, you know. That's some of the variability. You don't you don't get to have you don't get to be omniscient. You don't get to have all the information. If it wasn't for the fact that um, the cycle time is very realistic and just as crappy as it is in actual golf, you know, which is to say that you know. So to your point, right? Is if it's like okay, well, it's saying I can hit it sixty yards, but I it's probably not sixty yards because I'm in the bunker. But it does that mean it's thirty yards? Does that mean it's ten yards? Well, I'm just gonna. Just tear into this thing as hard as I can and hope it gets out. Oh no, I now completely overshot, so now I'm back into the rough. Okay, well, I'll I'll hit back over. Oh no, I overshot it again. All right, now I'm like four over par, which means that the entire game is now shot, basically. You know, which is like what an hour and a half of gameplay to get through the whole thing. You know, something like that. Oh yeah, it, I would say because I I played a lot of like pick up little bits and then a few entire courses, and I mean it's. It's over an hour. It it ain't short. Yeah. yeah. So that's the thing is that you could have one truly bad hole where you just, again, didn't really understand how the physics work, didn't really understand how the game worked. And you can't go back and say, okay, you know what? Let me mulligan that and try it again. You can't do any of that sort of stuff. And, you know, I could understand them saying, well, that's not how real golf works. It's like, I get that, but this is a game and I want to play a video game, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, I didn't care for that because I, I was, you know, playing one where I was two three under par doing pretty good and then yeah i just did not understand how hard i was gonna like how much skin i was gonna take off that ball and i dunked it into the water and then i overshot it into a bunker and then i overshot it into the rough and like i got i don't know like five over par and i was like oh okay (laughs) so i went from handily winning to handily losing in one hole and and again to your point right is that it, it makes you feel like an incompetent golfer right because Again, if if even some of this is the fantasy of being a golfer, that just maybe I'm wrong. I guess I don't watch a lot of golf, but I imagine that doesn't happen regularly, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's probably not such a dramatic uh, turn where they a professional suddenly is like eight over par. Right. Right. Especially if they were going from like, you know, one or two under par to just in one course, they, in one shot, they like eight over par. Like that would be the type of thing that would make the news, you know? Yeah. Like, that would be like t- a career ending. Like, you know, Oh, he had a mental breakdown and it was yeah. a catastrophe. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, Oh my God, you know, Tiger Woods doesn't, you know, like completely falls apart. Nike pulls sponsorship, you know, like that type of thing. So again, you know, and, and because it's a video game, it's so it's the opposite, right? Like in, in actual golf, that would almost never happen. In this game, it's very easy for that to happen, you know, especially when you're newer at it, you know. So, and 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 what it caused me to do was to want to play really conservatively. It's like, oh well, I won't hit it as far as I can because if it goes into the bunker, getting out of the bunker, I'm an incompetent golfer getting out of the bunker, right? So, like, and and playing super conservatively makes the game more realistic and less fun. Because you're optimizing the fun out of the game. And and again, like, you know, I, I'd be more than happy to tear into that golf ball and just, just kind of see see where it lands, test out the physics, do all that kind of stuff. But again, you know, you can't do that and play the game. So, for example, I'm, I'm playing a lot of Cyberpunk 2077 right now. And, you know, there there have been tons of times where I just, I tried weird stuff because I was like, I wonder how this plays out. And the answer is, honestly, 80% of the time, poorly. But I was then kicked back like 30 seconds and I was like, okay, well, you know, that... That didn't work out. One of the questions I had was, man, I'm feeling pretty powerful. Am I strong enough to take off on the police? No, <laughs> super not. Uh, they laid me out real, real hand, real nice and handy tender, you know, but, <laughs> but yeah, but I mean like that, I can't, you can't do that in this game, right? You can't just like try a thing where you're like, Hey, you know, I wonder, I know they're recommending this club, but what if I use this other one and they tried to overshoot it or use this one? No, all bad ideas play as conservatively as possible which is super not not nearly as fun as the game could be you know well, and this actually is a direct result of this game's an arcade port right so uh you played i think the ps4 version mm-hmm. yeah. and I, I played the switch version which i'm pretty sure are the same version like they 
I think we had the same menus, like they're they're functionally the same game. But this game has actually been ported a bunch of times. And like over the years, right? I mean going back to like I think the PS2. So it's possible they could have at some point said, Hey, what if we give you like a free golf mode? This obviously wouldn't exist in the arcade because we want your money. But on a console, this is a thing we could add that would add an entire additional layer to the game and might make it stickier and might make it more enjoyable. Change up cycle time for the home console player who's not pumping quarters in, having like a bar bet with their friend, but they didn't do that. What they probably yeah. did, and, and I don't say this to defame them because making video games is very hard, but what they probably have done over the years is the game itself is just the ROM from the arcade, right? And so every time they port it again, what they're really doing is making an SNK emulator that will run on that hardware. So mm. there was a PS2 SNK emulator that played this ROM. And now there's a PS4 SNK emulator that plays this ROM. I have a switch emulator that plays this ROM. Right. But it's like, <laughs> they haven't, they didn't really port the game because that would mean they wrote the game again for this other hardware. What they did was took the game literally wholesale out of the arcade system and just put it in a wrapper that would allow it to play on other hardware. So the the upside to that is you could play this game pretty much anywhere. And I actually have something to say about that if we get to it. Um, but the downside is it's not like you remember. It is exactly the same <laughs> as if you played it in an arcade. So any blemishes are still there. Any errors are still there. And that means no new modes, no benefits of the hardware, no what can we do differently because it's outside of the the arcade, you know, paradigm. Um and that's that sucks. Like that that's a huge bummer. Yes. Um I'm actually out. So you got anything else? Yeah, I do have one other thing I wanted to at least mention uh because it's funny. Uh when I say you can play this game anywhere, one of the places this game has been ported to is Android and iOS. Hmm. And yeah, there you go. this is one of the only game interaction models I can imagine that is close, still not as good, but close on a touchscreen to what it is on physical buttons because you are doing one button press on time. So you just, you're just hitting the glass instead of depressing a button on a controller or on the arcade cabinet. And it's not as satisfying. Touching glass sucks compared to touching a physical button. But in terms of your ability to be successful as a gamer, it's it's actually pretty close. And I know that because I did all of my playthrough for this game on the Switch. And then literally this morning, I just had a revelation where I was like, oh my God, this game was ported to Android and these controls probably work <laughs> great on a mobile phone. And so I played for like half an hour earlier today on my phone because it's fine. Like the, the joystick is weird. Cause you have to like slide back and forth on the glass. Um, but it, it's fine. And the, the part that matters, like getting the timing down, totally doable on touch controls. So like, would I still rather have buttons? Yes. Yes. Because buttons are better every time better, but this game does have an interaction model that actually lends itself pretty well to touchscreen controls. So I thought that was like a fun quirk of, they didn't try to change anything, and because the arcade controls were so dead simple, because you got to be able to play it drunk, <laughs> it actually <laughs> it actually makes it work in the mobile environment. And you know, I famously hate mobile games, so I thought that was fun. Yay! Yeah, it's, this is something you know that is is neither here nor there. But I, what was it? Fifteen years ago now, maybe twenty years? Not fifteen years ago when uh we were we were talking about uh the hulk and <laughs> and i said yeah people keep, keep thinking the gamma rays is going to give you powers no gamma rays kill you every time kill you every time <laughs> <laughs> so whenever somebody in our friends does that you know you know but but pressing a button's better better every time better I'm every like, time yeah. better. <laughs> um so you uh what, what, what are you thinking man does it hold up so i'm giving this game a nostalgia monocle and the reason for that is this game was great in its time for an arcade cabinet and it is exactly still like that. So it's very snackable. Like they want you to play the entire final round of the tournament, but screw them. You don't have to do what they want. Like <laughs> you can just dip in and play a hole or two. And if you're playing on a mobile device where you're just like standing in line and you just take out your phone and you like, 
you know, birdie and you, you're like, ha ha. And then they call your number at the DMV. Like, great. That's fine. You don't have to play the whole final round, right? The game wants you to. And even in the, the mobile port and on, on switch and probably on PS4, you can like save state. Like it's built in so that you can go back to it. It even supports multiple save states, which I thought was incredibly generous of them so that you can have like multiple games going at the same time. Um, again, that's all of the emulator, not the underlying game being changed. It's just emulator wizardry, but yeah, still. Y- yes, because everyone's going to use the save state to just save their game and not save scum. It, well, uh, I don't. It's not that kind of a save state. It's like you can oh, save okay. your progress. Oh, OK. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't I think like- you can. Not yeah, like if you have a true emulator save yeah. state, <laughs> yeah, you could just it's just like, oh hey, you really screwed that one up, mm-hmm. or did I? Or did I don't I didn't push the boundaries of the safe state, but I, I don't the UI doesn't make <laughs> it look like it works that way. Um, but my my point is like, there are better golf games, and I would actually encourage people to probably play other games golf games from this era, right? Like Hot Shots Golf, uh, the like Mario. Mario Golf, I think it was called on the N64, the 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 GameCube or whatever. Um, because I just think they're like more fun, but this game's not bad. It's just now it the competition it is going up against is mind-bogglingly massive. So to say, like, oh no, man, it's it's just as good as you remember, you should totally still play it. It's like, eh, like if you have nostalgia goggles for it, yes, play it. It is literally exactly like you remember. But if you've never played it, is this the golf game I would recommend? Probably not, unless you're going to do that mobile, like dip in, have fun for a couple of minutes and then dip back out. Like then, yeah, sure. But that that to me, what's like that boxes it into nostalgia monocle, which I, I almost feel bad about like the artwork because this game is no nostalgia goggles required on visuals. Like, gosh, just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous sprite work. But then you actually play it and you're like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to go play Mario golf or something. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, for me, it's uh, and I think that this, this makes sense. Um, no nostalgia goggles required, but I also don't have the penalty of things to compare it to that you do, <laughs> you know? So, so to me, it's, it's like my mind's almost like a no nostalgia goggles required. It's, it's a crappy golf game, like <laughs> <laughs> just like you remember. Yeah, it's just like you remember it. It's it's, it's, cr- it's a crappy golf game. Yeah, but I mean, because that's the thing is that like I don't like sports balls, and I don't generally like sports ball games. I actually didn't didn't mind this one, you know, um, just because it it is so, it is so divorced from the sport that like it felt like playing a video game. Where I was like, okay, you know, I, I I check inputs one through five. Using that information, I decide to do inputs six and seven, and then I check box eight, and I see how it all played out. You know, um, I thought the game was very was was beautiful. Um, it, the cycle time is is garbage, but at least the time that it takes for it to you know hit the ball, ball lands, and then you get to try the next thing the the time between engagement is very tight which i enjoyed so if i just started playing terribly then i just had to just ignore the score and then move on with life you know um but yeah i mean outside of that given my vast like things i can compare it to as far as golf games go this one's on par the curtain falls the music plays the credits roll then it all fades to black and you're left by yourself The fanfare is gone There's no player two There by your side to share victories won But as you slowly progress Down the hall to your bed A few great events Leak back into your head From the time that you spent Traversing the land Battling evil Fighting the darkness Just sword in hand Your memories creep in With the edge of a smile You realize again What you lost for a while You're gonna think back much less On how you saved the day 